Hello, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the first ever Monster High live stream. We are so excited to have you. We're here to talk about so many things today, but the inaugural fan club is obviously one of them. I'm Dominic Lisi. I'm on the Monster High marketing team. Hi, I'm Miranda Sanford, and we are so excited to have you with us. We are monitoring the chat, so throw your comments in there, your questions, and we will be looking at them the entire live stream. So I'm going to tell you what to expect from today. So first and foremost, we're going to walk through our fan club membership and what you will get as a member. And then I know a lot of you I saw from the chat are excited about Gulia, so we will bring up Gulia and our design team to talk about all her details. Then we will walk through a behind the scenes look of our core dolls, and then we'll answer all of your questions. Um, and then finally, if everyone stays to the end of the live, live stream, you will get a special surprise. Yeah, make sure to stay till the end because we do have one mic drop moment to give, to give you all. Um, so we just launched the inaugural 2023 fan club membership, and there are some really fantastic features that come along with this. Fan Club offers you unique opportunities and experiences with Monster High that you really can't get anywhere else. You can't get them anywhere no. else. What's the first one? Well, first off, we have our early access dolls and member exclusive doll opportunities. For example, Fan Club members will have exclusive opportunities to add to their collection by way of member exclusive doll and having first access to certain dolls before the general public. Super key. Pretty cute. Yeah. Um, and then the second one is designer live stream. So for the designer live streams, we're going to test this out today. We're going to give you a sneak peek of what it's going to be like to interact with the, with, uh, the designers of Monster High. Um, so this year, members will enjoy a special moment, additional ones, to join our live stream and interact with uh, our designers to discuss school-rific topics such as design inspirations, favorite characters, and much more. It's pretty cool. We get to talk to our designers every day, but it'll be great for everyone else to get They're a pretty speak. awesome. Yeah. They're right here. We can't wait. Waiting to speak to you all. Yep. Um, and then we'll have behind the scenes content. So as a member, you will have access to creep sneak peeks with behind the scenes content only found within the fan club. And members can learn more about Monster High doll creations and all the other ghoulish details. The next uh, item of business that you will get as part of a member is the member only forum. So another special part of the fan club membership will include access to the member-only forum. Here you can connect with your booze and show off your own Monstar collections and customizations. Mm -hmm. And that's not all. We also have voting privileges. Membership also entails your participation in the 2023 Fang Vote and other exclusive polls. So what better way than to share in the hauntingly chic fun of creating the next limited edition Monster High Collector doll? Amazing. Um, and then surprises. As we mentioned before, obviously there's going to be a key surprise today. But expect the unexpected as part of a member. Fan Club will frighten you with some fantastic surprises along the way. Ooh, frighten. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So don't miss out on all of the fun and be sure to join us in the Fan Club today. Head over to creations.mattel.com to sign up right after the live stream. Okay, so let's get to business. I am here to introduce our amazing design team who's going to come on stage um, and introduce themselves and they'll take you through some awesome stuff. All right. Hi everyone, we are so happy to be here. We are just, get on screen, a few <laughs> of the designers on the Monster High team. I'm Alina New, and I manage the amazing design team. I'm Rebecca Shipman, I'm part of the Monster High design team. I'm Annalise Lau, I'm also part of the Monster High design team. So today we'll be speaking on behalf of our whole team, but we wanted to mention that it takes a village of designers and artists to create just one doll, let alone a whole line especially this one that we know is so important to so many people, meaning you guys. So from the entire product design team who sketched over 100 different designs, the soft goods team creating patterns and sewing our tiny little fashions, our graphic art artists, sculptors sculpting and re-sculpting everything you'll see here today, and our detailed face painters. All of these people help to come up with just the initial designs. So many designers and artists contributed to each and every doll you will see in this line. And we are so excited to see you, <laughs> our Monster High super fans, all here today. We hope you love what you see. Becca and I are going to leave the stage for now and leave it to Annalise to show you Gulag's Gulia. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Thanks for that lead up. So I'm super excited to share. Dun, 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 dun. Awkward demo, Gulux Gulia for the first time with y'all. So give me a moment to get everything set up so we can talk about all the secret details. Let me make sure Gulux Gulia is looking beautiful. And if I could get a hand for a second. I know it's the board y'all are waiting for. It's prototype time, so I know you'll be screen capping. So when we're talking about behind the screens, I wanted to start us off with this awesome package that our packaging team designed. It's very sleek and modern and chic from the front, but it's actually super detailed with little touches. You can see the sides of the package are actually, uh, they're textured to look like stone, so it's like a little nod to the tombstone, and obviously being a zombie, which is Ghoulia's whole monster archetype, and this beautiful, beautiful photo in the back that shows off the bone exoskeleton corset, which we're gonna take a closer look at today. And then also you'll see that on the sides, there are a few sort of sticker-like decals that sort of talk about the things Gulia loves the most, her pets, her besties, her friends. And I wanted to zoom in on a little sticker here that says zombies are monsters too. I know we included this as part of our teaser. And some of y'all were like, where is that from? I know some of you day ones knew immediately, but for those of you who didn't, we're gonna flash back way back to the first ever G1 diary. So there's a little bit of a story time. I'm gonna live read. Apologize for me reading for so long. <laughs> August 31st, Gulia's wave one diary. I received my Zombies Are Monsters 2 t-shirt and bumper sticker in the mail today. The bumper sticker will have to go on my wall until I get my license, but I will proudly wear the t-shirt under something else because I hate drawing undue attention to myself. Yes, I am being contradictory here. I want to make a statement, but I do not want to be noticed while I am doing it. Why a statement? Well, it isn't it is not as if zombies are treated poorly by the legacy monsters, but sometimes we do get treated like background noise, which is a little disheartening. Yes, we only speak zombie. Yes, we slowly shuffle along. Yes, we often appear to be devoid of personality, but the observation could be made about any teenager. Regardless, I am just as special as any pedigreed monster. And what I really love about this short excerpt from this diary is it really spoke to me personally about when you're a little bit different, especially when you're in high school, and we are all so special and different in so many ways, maybe we're different from how we perceive the world or how we authentically show up. And the first time you find the courage to kind of buy something, maybe it's like a little pin or a special outfit that makes you feel like you're starting to show up in the world exactly how you want to be. I think that's kind of a really special moment. So I hope Gulia inspired all of you, like the other ghouls, to show up authentically as yourself. But also, I wanted to present a vision of Gulia where she maybe is her fully fledged self. She's ready to show up with the help of her ghoul friends in this stunning look. So I hope the camera has a nice, beautiful focus on this stunning doll. We're giving Gulia a little bit of a Gulux black carpet moment. So we're taking her out of school just for a second to walk the runway in this beautiful avant-garde look. We wanted to give her kind of like a designer fashion glow up, taking inspiration from runways and what we see happening in the world around. But I also wanted to add some chic little nods that when you're looking at this, you're like, that also gives me a little bit of dead fast, maybe a little bit of a superhero or a video game character where you're like, oh my God, that is the best school. I will never stop playing as that character, best ghoul, hands down, main ghoulia. So today, I'm going to get started by showing you all the details from head to toe. Wow, all my heads are turned around. Sorry, y'all. Let's have ghoulia face the front. Insert head noises. So our teaser showed off ghoulia's incredible face paint. And you even saw that on our membership page, we have the face paint prelim sketch I did, which was handed over to our talented, talented face artist. Mio, in particular, painted Gulia. And here you see the first hand-painted prototype that was given to our factories. This is actually what we call our paint master. It's a special prototype where we try to get every detail right before we send it to the plant. 
and then it goes into production. But you can see here, over here, I have two of my favorite Gulia face-ups. And for our G1 alumni doll, we really wanted to keep all the specificity of Gulia, so we kept her with thinner eyebrows, which are so core to the Gulia look. But we wanted to pump up the fullness and the vibrancy of the red lip, and then I wanted to have super dramatic eye makeup. When I don't have my falsies on, I do wear glasses. And those of you who are glasses wearers know, if you don't have a lot of makeup behind your glasses, your eyes don't really like pop on screen. So you can see how Face Painter did the most amazing job giving Gulia these deep, smoky eyes and that perfect pop of blue and green so she really like pops. And we actually chose not to use any blush for Gulia this season. So this really highlights Gulia's beautiful face sculpt, sculpted by her OG face painters. So she has that perfectly haunting, ghostly like look that's perfect for an undead zombie. And then when we talk about head accessories, obviously this beautiful face paint is framed by three gorgeous accessories. This is a brand new sculpt. It's a finger crown sculpted by Adam, and I love seeing the little knuckle bones of each finger bone. Fun fact, we actually looked at Skeleta's original body, which is the basis of like the skeleton bodies, right? And then we took elements of that as we were sculpting the bone details so it all feel cohesive in the Monster High universe. And then I've seen some of you call out that you might have seen these earrings around before. I saw that some people said, oh, Moanica from G2 had them and also Beetlejuice. But these actually go back a little bit further. Way back, there was a beautiful Gulia fashion pack designed by Becca off stage, where these amazing little radioactive earthworms were ever created. And so I chose to bring them back in this like neon green. So it has that radioactive look that's so core to a zombie origin. And then these are actually Gulia's core glasses. These are her signature specs, and we know we all love them. But this time they're shot and clear with only white in the front. And this kind of creates an illusion that the glasses are almost not there. So they're sort of floating in the front, and it creates sort of a pop, uh, a pop art like superhero look. So they're just like hovering above her in a very chic and interesting way. Fun fact, I know sometimes you guys think that we have all this amazing sculpting lying around in a factory somewhere, but sometimes we don't. And so for Gulia, we actually took all the secret info that we had from the first time and we rebuilt it again just to duplicate this pair of glasses exactly as they are. And okay, I know we're fashion ghouls, so this is kind of the best part, right? Well, let's talk about the clothes. So let me shuffle these beautiful heads away so we can focus on the clothing. So I wish I could see the chat because I'd love to ask how many of y'all are on boxers because hello, it's me, nothing's ever in the box. And because I am an unboxer and I know there are lots of different types of collectors, we wanted to make sure that you could have a fabulous doll that would look so beautiful on your shelf in a box. But also if you're someone who loves to redress, to mix and match, when you take her out of the box, you wanna make sure that Ghoulie is fun to play with, right? That you can pose her the way you want, that you can take all these accessories and like try them out with different dolls. I know some of y'all are like, what if she, this Gulia wore her core outfit or what if I remix and I'm seeing all your ideas already. So that's why almost every piece on Gulia is a separate piece. So we'll start from the beginning. You can see that Gulia is wearing this little um, cropped sweater underneath and it's got the single knit kind of ribbed cuff up here with this brain print. Drop in the chat if you know where the brain print is from. It's actually a historical G1 print. I'm not gonna be able to see the chat, but I see nods, so people are monitoring. And then there are these beautiful sheer puff sleeves over top. They add like the sort of presence to Gulia, and I'm always about varying up silhouettes. So every time you get a doll, it's something different that you didn't expect. And then Gulia is wearing this beautiful pleather little high shine jumpsuit over here and I'll give you a closer look at our prototyping and of course the fabric boots. So let's head over for a second to look at how it all began. So I'm actually a fashion designer by trade. I went to fashion design school and even though I didn't design for, you know, tiny people, it turns out designing for dolls is a whole lot like designing for real people, but just very, 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 very small. And here you can see the very first prototype that my fabulous support team, our pattern makers, our sample makers who make sure our ghouls are like snatched and ready to be fierce and fabulous on your screen, 
you can see the very first prototype. You can see that we're using materials that aren't necessarily the final materials. We don't have any prints. We're actually using a sample fabric that has flowers, which is, I guess, a little bit cool, yeah? sort of pushing daisies for a zombie. But you can see the very first look. Here you can see in my first muslin, I noted that some of the um, outfit pieces were not quite fitting. So you can see here the first pass, it's actually not conforming as much to the body as we want, which is really important for us because we wanted to put a corset on. So that was one of the fit issues that we worked on. We also looked a lot about the sleeve. We thought about maybe adding, you know, a seam to the shoulder where the, both of the sleeves would be connected, but that actually added a lot of bulk and it limited articulation for posing. So we chose to keep them separate which is super fun because you can actually mix and match them. And then while we started working on the soft goods, behind the scenes, behind the screams, we suddenly started working with our sculptor, Adam, who created all these beautiful pieces. So here I have my last remaining prototype of the OG corset. You can see here it's actually splintered off at the top because this was hard plastic and it survived almost a year of being handled around this office but you can see how beautifully detailed it's sculpted. And actually we output over five different samples as we test fit over different fabrics and different corsets to make sure the fit would be great. You can see actually the crop sweater initially, I wasn't thinking about having the seam in the front. I wanted it to keep it in the back for a really sleek look. But when we put the corset on, it actually caused a lot of bunching over here and suddenly the look wasn't as elegant and as sophisticated as we wanted to. So we swapped it to the front. That way, Gulia would always look beautiful for the runway. And then this is a little bit exciting. Mm. You know what? I'm going to show you the pattern first. I'm going to make you wait for the shoes because I know we're excited. But these are actually Monster High's first ever fabric shoes. When I got given this item to design for, I knew the first thing I wanted was like, please let me give them fabric shoes, please. And so this was actually the very first thing I sketched, these fabric shoes. I wasn't sure what the sculpt would be, but I was like, we are going to give Gulia the fabric boots that she deserves. And so after I came up with the concept, then we started working on both the fabrication and the sculpt. So you can see here, I'm gonna hold it up so maybe the camera can zoom in a little bit. This is the very first ever sculpt, sculpted in-house. So you can see the first use of that hand. For those of you who have eagle eyes, we did look at Skeleta's hands as we were sculpting this. And then this is the inner insert. This is the part that's sandwiched under the fabrics that gives the boot the elegant pointed shape. You can see here, without the pointed, it looks a little bit sock-like, but once it's all assembled together, it's so beautiful and so chic. And then this is very monster high of us, I guess. But when I looked at the first prototype, I thought, mm, something's missing a little. What is missing? And then I was like, the shoe needs to be higher in G1 Monster High. The shoe can always be higher. You can see the evolution about how adding that little bit of height creates a more elevated look and gives a chicer, more streamlined effect. I also wanted to share with you guys that Gulli actually comes with a wider clip than normal. You can see it here. This is a clip that we tend to use on our male characters. And the reason I included it here is because when we use a traditional waist clip, it actually started to warp the corset. It would push the corset up and sort of deform the look of the doll while you guys have it on display. So the intention of this bigger waist clip is so it actually sits nicely on Gulia's hips. So that way you can pose and display her without, um, without really like making sure that the corset is moving in a way that's not as cute. And then, did we talk about, give me a second brain operating. <laughs> Wanted to share a little bit of behind the scenes. This is at first glance quite a simple outfit and you might think, you know, a brain print's a brain print and it is definitely a brain print, but it actually starts off here. So for those of you guys who know, this actually started off in the scarce budget Gulia line doll. And I love this print so much that we pulled it back and our graphic designer, Lisa in this case, helped me recreate this print and add this extra shadowing. 
And then we went to fabric choices. So we looked at different vendors to find the prints and the quality that was up to standard. You can actually see here, they sent me a beautiful red swatch for me to approve for like the hand feel so you get that beautiful luxe color. And then they actually sent me a print sample that you can see that this is actually not nearly as shiny, but they said, you know, don't look at the shine, look at this for the shine. But this is all about the details of the print. And while I really loved adding that shadow over here, when I saw it in the print, I realized that, you know, the shadow actually looked a little bit messy. It looked like a misregistration instead of a crisp new look. And so we actually removed that shadowing here. And here you can see the final. So you can see our handmade prototype right here first with no print. And then over here, this is actually our in-house printing. So we do a lot of one-of-a-kind samples in-house. And it takes a little bit of time before we go to production. And you can see how crisp and beautiful our amazing pack factory partners do. Blah! <laughs> how crisp and beautiful our production prototypes are. And what an amazing job they do making these one-of-a-kind dolls in-house come to life for all of you. And I know last but not least, we have talked a little bit about this purse. This is a brand new sculpt for Gulia. I'm going to hold it out here. It says VIP in front, which is very important presence. That's all of you joining us today who are hopefully purchasing this doll. And it's got these beautiful hands sculpted on the side that are holding it together. On the back, this is our secret that we hinted at in our promo pictures. We actually have little buttons and stickers for all of the things that Gulia loves. You can see some of the hearts and icons from things that were used in Gulia's original merch guide. You also see a little slow-mo skelet for her boyfriend. You see Sir Hoots. Here is her foam finger pointer. This is actually from the Fear Leading 3-pack. That's the accessory that Gulia is holding. There's obviously a dead fast logo for her favorite all-time superhero. And of course, we wanted her to stick that Monsters Are Zombies Are Monsters 2 bumper sticker on the bottom. The purse does open up, and you can see that there is a sculpted Gulia skelet inside. And this is the perfect size to put like your eye coffin, your comfort action figure, whatever Gulia needs to get on with her day. And I think our last surprise, apart from the fabric bruise, is that we've been saying that there's like a hidden secret under the soles. So that's what I'm going to show you. Let me pull her off her sand. Whoops, and there we go. Sorry, Gulia's purse. I'll get it after this live stream. If you look under, there is actually a secret dead fast Easter egg sculpted on the underside of the shoe. There is dead fast's head in like a superhero burst. And on the other side, there is the logo that was on her Comic Con costume, carefully sculpted and hidden under the shoe. And I'm going to leave you with one extra thing that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. So when I shared the same details with our packaging team, they actually hid a super secret Easter egg in the package, which you guys can't see from the promo. So if you look on the bottom where Gulia is actually standing, in UV printing, there are tiny, tiny footprints that match exactly the shoe's sculpt. Isn't that the coolest detail? We were so excited when I saw this for the first time. I just like freaked out. And so that's all the time I have to ramble to you guys. So let me wrap it up real quick with a little roundup. So as a fan club member, you'll get to obviously purchase Gulux Gulia. Super cute. But you'll also get access to behind the scenes info about our Monster High dolls. So to give you a sneak peek of the kinds of amazing details you'll get, Elena and Becca are going to come up here and share a behind the scenes look of our G3 core dolls. So let us awkwardly transition and give us time to bring our ghouls to the big stage. gave you Yay. a great sneak peek of the kind of info you'll be getting. That was amazing. Don't step on her tombstone. Oh, we'll just switch over the dolls. I'm sure these will look very familiar to you all. These are our core dolls. Let me make them face they, the camera. Don't they? Hey, hey. I thought they were supposed to hey. face the other way. We face the other way. Oh, I see. Oh, 
sorry. Wait, which way do these guys go? They face that way. Oh. <laughs> I think these face this way. I know. The dolls face that way, these face this way, and we face that way. <laughs> it's our first time doing a live stream. I don't know if you guys knew this. Okay. Neptuna. Oh, where's Neptuna? Okay, I think we're set up. We're back. All right, we're, we are back and ready to take you through some of the gory details of our G3 dolls. We're so proud of how these dolls turned out. They may have effortless style, but what you don't see are the hundreds of sketches and iterations of doll designs that we worked on. I like a lot of them mm -hmm. um, to get to this point. We, we designed, built, and tested so many versions of these dolls um, and these designs for a new generation of fans, but we really wanted to give you, our beloved fans, just another way to enjoy Monster High. And when we first started thinking about G3 for Monster High way back in 2019, 2019, we knew we really wanted to create a new version that would be meaningful and important to kids today while keeping the essence of the original Monster High that we all know and love. Let's get into the details. All right, so first we have Claudine Wolf, our werewolf. Woo! Ooh. So for all the ghouls, all the monsters, we gave them brand new um, head sculpts and body sculpts. Um, so for Claudine, we included her werewolf ears, uh, fun fur detail on her jaw, um, wrists and ankles. Got claws, of yeah, course. Yeah, claws and fangs. Um, for her hair color, this is cute, it's a fun fact. Alina knew way back <laughs> in 2019 or 2020, she created a sketch and she had this beautiful ice cream colored hair, so we kept it, we just loved it so I can't much. believe we like, were able to get that color. It's such a weird and cool, I love what it. do you call it? Ice creamy color. Ice creamy color. Um, for her fashion, we have a lot of uh, crescent moon details. She's got that fun fur jacket, or vest, sorry. Um, she's got clawed hands. Um, we uh, brought back her animal prints. Um, and then for snacks, I love the snacks. We gave her a blue moon cookie and some howl puffs. And what else? Am I forgetting anything for Claudine? Oh, she's got little moons in her <coughs> eyes. Oh yeah, the eye deco, the, the deco that Becca worked on with our face team. Mm. You'll see little secrets and surprises even within their eye deco. Yep, and then we have Crescent. Of course, Crescent, who's now a little wolf pup. Yep, then we got cool deuce right cool. we thought it'd be fun to update deuce with a um, a nice green tone for his skin um, he's looking sharp with his snake hairdo um, he has a cool scale printed jacket um, he's these shoes that Kay created uh, with our sculpting team these snake shoes are colossal um, since deuce likes to cook we included an apron and a monster cupcake um, and then we've got perseus back oh yeah his little two Tailed. Two tails for Perseus yeah. and a tiny little snake tattoo. Yeah. So cute. He's a cute little rat. <laughs> um, then we've got Draculaura, everybody's favorite ghoul, I think. Um, she is adorbs and she's got fun new extra pointy ears. Oh, yeah. And fangs. She's I remember, Becca, because we really wanted to dial up Monster this time around. We love G1, and but we wanted to say, like, what, what could we do that's different this time around? And we wanted to make the monster details even more monstery. And I might have gone a little bit too far because I, <laughs> I did send Becca a reference of Bat Boy with his yeah, really batty ears. I'm like, what about this for Drac? It's so good. It's not but quite that, but it's, it's cute. <laughs> it's I think inspired. Bat Boy's cute. Um, <laughs> she's got her cute little vampy pink and black um, outfit. Uh, we've got Oh, again with the snacks. This is probably my favorite snack out of the first core dolls. This Bavar batty Bavarian soft pretzel. I love soft mm -hmm. And then she's got her cherry juice. Big gulp. Yeah, that's a <laughs> big cherry juice. She's got to stay hydrated. Yeah. And then SPF 500 um, and Count Fab. Yes. Yeah. And my one of my favorite little hidden details on Draculaura is if you look at her cameo really closely, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Glenda had the sculpting team add G1 Draculaura in her cameo. So like a, little, a little Easter egg for y'all. Yeah. 
really cute. She's, she's always my favorite. Mm -hmm. All righty, moving on to Frankie Stein. They have changed a lot in G3, but we made sure to keep their stitched together, their stitched together aesthetic and lots of electrifying details. One design detail that you might not have noticed is that everything about Frankie's face sculpt in both G1 and G3 is more square. So if you look at just the sculpt, even their eyes, their nose, their ear shape, mouth shape is more square than the other ghouls, and that's a nod to the original monster. So we added a creeperific new silver leg this time around, which we wanted to make look like Frankie could have built it themselves. You'll even notice Frankie's name, and there's little doodles here. Frankie's name is upside down because we wanted to make it look like, like she wrote it. Like they, they wrote, wrote it wrote themselves. It themselves. Yes. They have they. clunky high top sneakers inspired by Frankenstein's monster's boots. Yep. And Frankie has an updated plaid skirt that when you look really closely, you'll see it's electrified throughout the plaid print. Mm -hmm. um, we've got all this super cute piece count. I don't know, Becca, I heard you had a secret about oh, the piece Oh, so, yes, yeah, so a few years ago, Simi and I uh, worked on Wild Hearts Crew, and I don't know if you remember those dolls, but there was a character named Rally, and she was inspired by Frankie from the um, G1 line. Um, and I thought it'd be a fun nod to like hark back to that by giving her a pizza. And, but this time it's a lightning bolt pizza for this version of Frankie. And it's just so cute to like kind of tie yeah. back and we forth love tying to the lines that we work on. Everything. Mm -hmm. Like fun Easter eggs. Um, and that's some of the things that you'll hear with the membership. Um, and then we'll go on to Watsi, Frankie's puppy with cute stitched together details. You can see What's new about Watsi, other than his name, is that he has a little dragon tail um, and lightning bolt wings, which are very new for G3 and tied to our content. Okay. They look voltageous. Yeah, so voltageous. Okay, let's move into Laguna Blue. She's really one of my favorites. She has a brand new body with fins on her arms and legs, of course, and on her legs, they trend. They transitioned from this. I love that. It's almost like she's yeah. aquarium lake. Yeah, this like <laughs> ooh, oh. coral, coral to this oceany blue. And we felt this was such a cool detail. Um, of course, Laguna Blue needs some blue on her, even though we love this coral. Um, so we thought it also looked like she could partially be made out of water, which was fun and monstery. Mm -hmm. um, and then what else did we do? Her face. Oh, that seahorse harks back to original. Oh Monster yeah. High oh, too. we used to do that a lot. Totally. And her jacket. And the hoodie is very G1 inspired. If mm -hmm. you look at the print on her hood and even these little fins. fins. Yeah. What else about and those rainbow shorts are just adorbs. Oh yeah. If you look okay. really closely at this rainbow print on her shorts, it's like inspired by how water gets hit by the sun, so like that how reflection. it has that reflection. Mm -hmm. And that fanny pack, that shark teeth. Oh yeah, with a tiny little bite taken out of that fanny pack. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at this piece count. I love the, the kelp sun. crisps, Those which are, are nice upside snacks. down on here. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh. that guy, no, these are so cute. Kelp I, crisps. Yes, and then piranha crackers. Yeah, gold, not goldfish. Piranha crackers. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have our shell backpack, with a hidden spider web with Don't forget her shell phone. Oh, yeah. shell phone I know. We'll take every chance we get to call this a shell phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Neptuna, who is some people's favorite and some people's not so favorite pet, but I love her. I love her too. I don't, what? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Annalise. <laughs> she has the cutest little teeth. I love her. Okay, moving on to Cleo Denial. Oh, my rock. Oh, yeah. my raw. I love her. Um, we wanted to push Cleo to look more monstery, just like the other ghouls. So we dialed up a golden shimmer with her bronzy warm skin, which was really inspired by some Egyptian art and um, the colors we see there. We added wraps sculpted into her body. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look at this face, Becca. I, mean, I know. I love the gold little lip. Yeah, that we did for her and the um, Egyptian eye on one. Totally, side. and we wanted her eyes to look even more monstery. So you'll notice she doesn't have black like pupil. Lapis blue. Yes, we love that lapis blue and gold eye that she has, mm -hmm. and of course she's got a lapis blue hair as well. Um, and talking about Cleo's sculpt, if you look at G1 sculpt and G3, it almost looks like. 
Cleo's more sculptural than the other ghouls mm -hmm. with that like the ridge. The ridge on her nose, which is such a cool detail that Adam added to both of these. Yep. Um, and we love them. Also inspired by Egyptian art. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about her piece count a little bit. My oh. favorite, that canopic jar water yes, bottle. Yes, with the Nubis on the top. Yes. So cool. Um, and a wrap sandwich, of course. Mm -hmm. Everything's about wraps. And then, oh, this purse. The, the per backpack, pyramid too. backpack with scarabs all over it. So cute. Very, very cute. Um, and then we have a pet here. It's our Anubis-inspired little tut. But don't worry, our design team has not forgotten yeah, about his set. Yeah, his set's still around. She just has a new animal. Yeah, we love her just as much as you do. And you yeah. may see her at some point. Who knows? Anything's possible. Well, <laughs> oops. all of our dolls are falling over. But that's a wrap for Cleo that's a wrap. and our G3 dolls. We Yay. hope you had fun hearing about some of the behind the scene details about the dolls. <laughs> and now for some Q&A with the rest of the team. Yay. Come back, everyone. Come over here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I learned so much from that, um, <laughs> and things. I work on the brand every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for your questions. We're so excited to see the excitement through the chat and um, the love for the design team. So thank you for participating. Yeah. Um, so we got a few questions. The first question yeah. is, well, we actually got a lot of comments about our Cree productions and whether there'll be more of them. So anyone care to comment on that? More Boo original Cree productions? I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. Anything's possible. I think, wink, you'll wink. Be, I think you'll be really happy. I think you'll be happy. Yep. Yes. Oh, and just a reminder, we want to know what makes you happy. So please put all your comments, questions, requests in the chat because we're going to go through that with a fine tooth comb. Yes. Yeah. And also, I mean, this team, out of anyone else, probably at Mattel, Monster High team is so immersed in what you guys are talking about. We constantly are, are analyzing what, what you guys want and what you're talking about and, and hoping to bring that to you. So yes, keep it going. It's a 24-7 yeah. job because of you guys. So keep, <laughs> keep it coming. Tell True. us what you want. We really, we really want to know. Absolutely. All right, so next question. Will members also get first dibs on student items? I think um, for the G3 line that the team just walked through for the core dolls, it's important that that you know was really having access to the new generation of the Monster High fans in addition to all of you fans. So for the fan club in particular, we're gonna focus on collector items first. Never say never in the future if we create elevated or collector versions of these G3 dolls, but it's really meant to be collector focused. Awesome. All right, people are asking, will we be at Comic-Con? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Love Comic-Con. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we were there last year. Yes. Thank you to everyone who came and stopped by our booth. Yeah, come see and us. And got a pin. <laughs> Add to your collection. Oh, yeah, where's my pin? Um, and finally, we saw that there was a lot of love in the chat for our Monster High designers. Um, and we Aww. wanted to, and people want to know, why do you love working on Monster High? What makes you so Aww. passionate about the brand? Do you want to start, boss lady? Yeah, oh, go the ahead. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was a Monster High fan when I was in toy design school. So I would go to the big Toys R Us in New York City and like I saw them when they launched. I'm getting like chills. But I like Aww. bought them all. I was like, what are these? They are amazing. I, I have a huge collection. So I am a, I'm a fan first. Also, like when I first met Becca, I remember I was like, ooh. <laughs> so I'm I'm a huge fan of the whole design team. I'm not really their boss. We're just a big team that works together. Um, yeah, and I love that you guys love Monster High. I love that you are so passionate. And I've, I've talked to a few people on Instagram through the chat. But I just think it's amazing that something like this has influenced your lives and you love it. Loved it back then, love it today, and I'm happy to bring it to a new generation, but also keep you guys um, happy with collector product as well. So happy to keep the brand alive and strong. Like what she said, but I've been a lifelong monster 
obsessed fan. Um, I grew up watching all the old horror films thanks to my parents and my mom. <laughs> and then, and my brother, sorry, and my mom, whatever. So it's live stream and make mistakes. Hi, mom. Um, but when this brand launched, I was like, this is like a dream come true. I wish I had this as a kid. This is like the perfect line. And when I actually had a chance to come and work on it, it was like, the biggest dream come true. And I'm just so glad that I got to work on the old one and then the new one as well, because I know it means so much to people and for me too. So I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, ditto, ditto times three. <laughs> but also like I was an OG fan when I was in design school, I was in fashion design. And after trying out the industry, I think college is a lot about finding out who you are and where you might want to be in the world. And I was feeling a little bit unsure about fashion after some of my experiences there personally. So I was like, what else can I do with all this like knowledge and all these things I've learned? And I kind of had, um, I'll call it like a college breakdown in a Target toy aisle. I know you all <laughs> being there, no judging, okay? <laughs> and while I was having this moment, I was looking in the toy aisle at these like amazing gorgeous dolls and I was like, I bet Someone actually does that. <laughs> Who does that? And so I went and looked it up. And a few months later, and kind of sort of by fate, Mattel did come to my particular school. And I was an intern one year. So apply for our amazing internship program. If you're out there, we do want to see your amazing work. And I ended up here. And it's taken me a little while to be on this team. I joined in the relaunch. And I'm so excited and honored to work with amazing designers who have been there the whole time. And it's so cool to be able to do both. That's the thing I really love. Like I love working on G3 and thinking about new ways to interpret our new versions of the ghouls and the different like friendships and different styles they have. Skultimate just launched, so you know, go support that too. <laughs> but I, <laughs> listen, I am a sales Got to plug it. <laughs> plug it, okay? But I also love being able to work on special projects like this G1 Ghoulia and think about like what silhouettes and what cool techniques and designs can we push a little bit further, right? Because you guys have grown up with the brand. Your tastes are elevated. You do such creative, amazing things. We see your fan art, your restyles all the time, and we're just as inspired to oh. create things that mm -hmm. make you guys happy yes. and creative. And we can't wait to see all the things that we have planned yes. on your shelves. Yes, we, have, we know you guys are so, so talented and you inspire us. Yep. Every day. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, that is so a, fun. that's a beautiful way to end our <laughs> Q and A. Um, thank you again for all the questions. Um, but we know we gotta we have a time limit oh, yeah. on crunch here, uh -oh. so we'll wrap it up. Yeah. First and foremost, we just really want to thank everyone for joining. You know, it's been such a fun first live stream, first inaugural. So we're definitely gonna do more of these. Um, you know, we really appreciate you spending your time with us, and we had a blast being here. Um, you know, the second thing that we want to mention is get the membership. If you don't have a membership already to the fan club, what are you actually doing? You know, <laughs> get it. Have it's it. there yeah, for you. Oh, yeah, With that membership, you're able to buy the Gulux Gulia Yelp stall that you heard all about today. <laughs> There's probably way more Easter eggs and mm -hmm. things that Annalise didn't point out today. She could go on for days. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> after this, when the live stream um, ends at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you'll be able to buy the doll, so stay tuned. And then the last thing today is that secret that we talked about earlier. Mm. These are things that you can expect as part of um, the membership program. We're going to leave you with a sneak peek of the first look at the prototype of that Fang Boat doll, Rochelle Goyle. Ooh. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Back. Woo. Yay.